All right, here's something that can help you out when it comes to your health. When you're introduced to novel foods, foods that humans haven't eaten for like thousands of years, foods that basically have come into the horizon in a new time or modern times, when you're looking at those foods, remember this, guilty until proven innocent. I know the opposite is how we talk about our justice system, but when it comes to new foods, assume they're bad until they're proven, absolutely proven that they're fine, that they're okay. Doing this will probably save you a lot when it comes to your health. So remember the term, guilty until proven innocent. <laughs> Got this one from Max. I didn't think, uh, did he actually say it like that? He did. Oh, he yeah, did. Max Lugavere taught me this. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So I love I, it. I don't, was that when we were in London? He said that to you? I don't even He did, and I wrote it down, and I put his name under it, because you guys teased me and said that I take quotes and don't... Oh. <laughs> and don't, go, don't I mean, oh, I actually don't credit remember that, like nor it. did I have any idea where you were going with that yeah. whatsoever. But I do like that, um, I do like that philosophy. Like, yeah. I think that, it's when it, at least in regards to nutrition, I yes. think that we're so quick to uh, jump on the the newest uh you know supplement we're always so quick to jump onto uh, a bar because it meets the macros um versus going like you know ideally and you've heard me talk about this on the show many times like that's my thought process i even talk about shakes and protein bars this way that mm -hmm. that's not considered a perfect day for me even yeah. if i hit my macros that i would be following uh, if, if it was done with shakes and bars, it's not a perfect day. A perfect day for me is could I hit my macros and could I do it through whole foods? And then how many of those days can I string together? To me, that was always the goal when I was competing was like trying to string as many of those whole food days of hitting macros. And it doesn't mean I beat myself up because I had to have a protein shake or sure. a bar. It's just that I, I realize and recognize that eating whole natural foods is always going to be superior uh, for overall health, not necessarily for body composition mm -hmm. and losing weight on the scale, but overall health, we're, we're just not going to be able to yeah, beat all, whole all foods. I know it's not, a, it's not as popular because, you know, artificial sugars in our space are like sort of uh, highly contestable. Yeah. Like the, and, you know, there's people that are, are very much trying to... Um, sway their their clients more in that direction because it's lower calorie and but it's not innocuous and so there's this is one of those newer kind of segments of like sweeteners and like brand new things that they introduce into the market we don't know the long-term effects of uh some of these chemicals yeah well it's also uh food doesn't just affect our physiological selves it also affects us mentally uh, i mean like like you used artificial sweeteners right no calories okay so you take it well, okay so it's nothing it just goes through the body but if it was nothing, you wouldn't use it. Why do you use it? It gives you the perception of sweetness. Can perceiving sweetness alter your behaviors? Of course it does. Otherwise, you wouldn't seek it out. And right. what are those potential effects long-term on your behaviors, your eating habits, and so on? So this conversation with Max happened because we were talking about uh, seed oils. Mm. There's a big debate on seed oils, right? And they're like, oh, the data shows it's fine. Other people are like, well, they're not good because in order to consume seed oils in the quantities that we do... Uh, we have to process the hell out of them. It's like uh, modern industrial technologies are able are, are what allow us to eat, you know, lots of you know rapeseed oil or canola oil or whatever, right? Um, that whole process probably not good. But then again, you have the people on the side who are saying, well, the data so far isn't showing that it's bad. And Max said, look, here's a deal: there are better oils that are already out there. We know olive oil; we've been eating it for thousands of years. Requires. Yeah. Almost no processing. You squeeze an olive, there's the oil. And the data is very clear on the health benefits of all of us. So it's like, why choose this thing over here that humans have not really been eating in large quantities for more than, let's say, 60 years or so over something that we know for sure is a good thing? And then he said, I like to use the term guilty until proven innocent. When a new food or new process emerges... Uh, then it's probably better. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to be hundred percent, but it's probably better to assume it's not good until it's unequivocally, right? Completely unequivocally proven to be totally okay. Now, the reason for this is that we, we, we co-evolved with our food. So all the food that we've eaten for thousands and thousands of years, right? So like animal proteins and plants and grains that don't require tons of processing, right? We've eaten those for thousands of years and our bodies over those thousands and thousands of years have evolved with these foods so we know they're okay. All, novel foods like a Pop-Tart, yeah, a Pop-Tart is made with other ingredients and all that stuff, but uh, Pop-Tarts have been around for how long? 100 years maybe or 50 years? 
Uh, probably safe to assume it's not going to be great for you. This is true for all foods that haven't existed for a long time. It's better to assume that they're guilty until proven innocent. And that'll lead you more often than not. I'm not, I'm not saying it's perfect, but more often than not, that's going to lead you in the right direction. And I like that he said that. I think mm. that makes a lot of sense because do we have hard data that shows that seed oils are super bad for you? No, there's some data that might suggest it and other data that suggests it might be okay. But uh, there's nothing unequivocal. There's nothing like total unequivocal. Like we've been having these for 200 years. We got all this data, you know, over generations, it looks like it's totally safe. We're not there yet. So let's just assume it's probably worse for us than like olive oil. At least know? keep an air of caution, right? Yes. Like at least like sparingly uh, with some of these more modern foods that, that uh, came out um, it, and lean more heavily upon the, the whole foods where we know like over uh, centuries, like yeah. people have done well. With well, it. I, I think you can have, it, you can also have like a moderate attitude about this too, right? It's like, it's so, it reminds me of politics so much, right? You, you either have to be way left or way right. It's like, no, I'm yeah. somewhere in the center on this. Like, I absolutely, I'm drinking something right now that has, you know, artificial sweeteners right. inside of it. So mm -hmm. you can, you and I, and if someone asked me, Hey, is that a health drink? I would say, no, it's not. <laughs> and I'm, I'm aware yeah, of you're that. You're not pretending. Right. That yeah. Is, yeah. I think, I feel like that's the hardest part about communicating about the seed oils or any of these foods that are highly processed is that, listen, I feel like I can communicate that it's, I know it's not ideal for my body at the same time too. I'm not demonizing it and saying like, I would never touch something like that. And I think that's, I think that's so the way prioritize I prioritize like, the right stuff. That's right. The, that's the idea. Exactly. I think that's how I'd, I'd prefer to communicate it. It's like, listen, again, 100% day looks like a day where I don't have to use any real processed foods. It's all whole natural foods. And I've uh, been able to hit my macros. Now, does that happen every single day? No, it doesn't happen every single day. But I also am not fooling myself into thinking that when I have all these processed foods and artificial sweeteners and things in my diet, that I consider that completely feeding my body ideally like there's still a better version and then and i feel like that's how we talk about fitness all the time it's like yes. i'm always striving to be a better version of myself every single day i'm not also going to beat myself up every time that doesn't happen to be a perfect day i think you can be somewhere in the middle of this conversation and you don't have to be this you know dogmatic person who's just like demonizes vegetables and all you eat is carnivore or you don't have to be this i'll never touch any of that hippie or you have to be this person who justifies it and then they consume non-stop all day long all these artificial sweet it's like i don't know i'm somewhere in the middle of this conversation. yeah no I, I like what you're saying i mean look here's like heavily processed foods is a good example heavily processed foods contain preservatives they contain food you know things that color that change the color of them so like artificial colors they have sweeteners that maybe we didn't consume thousands of years ago or, or even hundreds of years ago. So they have all these things within them and we can debate whether or not they're good or bad. And there's data that shows it probably okay. Data that might suggest it might not be okay. Some of it's animal data. Can we trust that? Let's forget that for a second. Here's what we know for sure. For sure. Heavily processed foods for sure are processed to be hyper palatable for sure. They're designed to be so irresistible to your body's senses that they will for a fact, cause you to overeat. We know this for a fact. We know that it's to the tune of about 600 calories a day. You'll consume more when all things are equal if you're consuming heavily processed foods versus whole natural foods. Okay, so why is that important? We evolved with certain experiences with our foods and flavors. When we hijack that, our primitive bodies don't know what to do. So all of our, our you know checks and balances like satiety, right? Palate fatigue, like palate fatigue is when you eat the same food for too long, you start to get sick of it. Like, you know, you eat like uh, just a plain potato after a while, you're like, Oh, I don't want to eat anymore. That's one checks and balances. Satiety is another checks and balance, right? You eat and then you're satisfied. Ooh, I don't really want to eat much more. Okay. This feeling of fullness. That's a check. And, that's a check and balance. Well, those are gone. Those are hijacked when you eat foods that are designed to go around those things. So you eat a bag of Lay's potato chips, you'll eat way more potatoes than if you just ate plain potatoes even though the calories are higher, in fact, with the, with the bag of chips because of the oil that they add. You'll eat way more. You'll eat four to five potatoes worth if you really push yourself. But I'd love to see somebody do, you know, four or five plain potatoes. So that alone, so I don't, you don't need to debate with me or we don't need to go down, like you said, the extreme path of every single ingredient. Maybe this data shows it. And here's an animal study. And what about this, that, and the other? Hmm. It's like these foods are so addicting. They're designed to be addicting that you will overeat. And we know overeating is not good for you. So why are we even debating uh, pretty yeah. much 
anything else. Yeah. That's that's like California's you know. protecting us from red dice. So that's yeah. Yeah, that's the <laughs> start. Today's program giveaway is Maps Anabolic Advanced. If you want to win that program, you got to do this. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale this month. Maps Resistance, our beginner strength training program is half off. And then Maps Prime Pro, this is for correctional exercise purposes. That's also 50% off. If you're interested in either one, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Right That's in the right funny. direction. I don't know, broken <laughs> clock sometimes, right? What's that term, broken clock? What happened? What right? do they do? Uh, They're banning certain dyes because of their effects on... Yeah. I California think is? Really yeah. tackling the big issues. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. I think because they affect some kids certain certain ways or whatever. Yeah. Red dye does that. Do you guys... Have, you yeah, guys you've brought that, that up. You've brought mm -hmm. that up My before. kid gets yeah. affected by red dye. Oh, yeah. you know that specifically. Yes, dude. I'll really? Give him, yes, if I give him like red, like gummy bears. Yeah. Uh, I just noticed it starts acting crazy. I'm like, what? what? Yeah, dude. <laughs> you are fucking high, bro. No, I'm not. <laughs> there is no way you give your son a red gummy bear and you can tell all of a sudden he acts I different. can tell when he has uh, anything with red dye, so we avoid it. So, you know, we get Tylenol, we get it dye free. Really? Because a lot of, there's a lot See, of- See, I've heard this a lot. And, and look up uh, look up red dye and hyperactivity. Uh, uh -huh. Andrew, and you'll see. No, I know it's got negative. You've talked about it before, but to, why would it, why would I be making it up you, about my kid? You really think you could tell a difference from him having red yeah. dye? Oh my god! Really? You, can you tell the difference when you give a kid sugar? Yes. Okay. That I definitely okay. can tell. So I can tell the difference between sugar because he said the other gummy bears, and yeah. then we add the red ones in. It's in a whole nother gear. What's the difference between <laughs> the 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 red dye gummy bears and the other one that are sugar ones? What do you mean one of them's? Oh, not I'm sugar? just saying. So you know, sugar makes kids well make kids act a particular way, but red dye number forty. Has been has been connected to uh, increased hyperactivity uh, or ADHD. Mm -hmm. What is that? What is that most prevalent in? What is it like? What do we see that in the most? Red red processed foods. We'll oh, so if it, so if it's if it's it's a colored red. Yeah, if it's like our skin. So like uh, or red like vines. Yes, you, most okay. likely. I would imagine fruit punch or anything so else. <clears throat> most <clears throat> common sources of red dye for you: cereal, chips, sports drinks, baked goods, candy. Soda, yeah, like Gatorade and all that. Yeah. Oh, crap. Food cereal too, huh? Yeah, mm. yeah. So if you're and chips, yeah, that's a weird one for yeah, red dye. Doritos, uh, oh, or yeah, like Doritos. Uh, or Fire <laughs> Cheetos, probably. Oh God, <laughs> is Fire Cheetos got it? All those. That's like the most popular chip in the world, isn't it? I remember, like, look, whenever I eat them, I'll, I'll take a look to see the ingredients, and it's almost every time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Why does your kid react to red dye too? Not that I paid close enough attention to. Okay. Um, but I'm just talking about like, I'll, I'll just eat it willingly. You know, that's crazy you know, as hell. Sometimes, you know, you know what happened? <laughs> you know what happened? We gave him uh, a paint, I think it was Tylenol. And I was like, oh, he doesn't react well to, to Tylenol because mm. it doesn't make him, he can't sleep. So I thought maybe it was the acetaminophen. Yeah. Then I had another acetaminophen that was dye free. So it was just like white colored and he slept totally fine. That's when I started paying attention. Then every mm. once in a while we'll get um, like gummy bears or something like that mainly because dad likes gummy bears. You guys know this. Yeah. And uh, I noticed it. And so I pointed out to Jessica. So we started paying attention. Sure enough. What? So never, whenever we do something like that, we take out the red, the red candies. So is that one of the, is that one of the dyes that they're pulling or they're, they're going to yeah, make? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Red dye number 40. There's and some, then there's another one. So it's going to be like red gummy bears on the black market real soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stocking them all up right Actually, now. Actually, red Hot tamales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, Stock red dye number 40 is banned in Europe. Maybe look that up. Yeah. I don't know if red dye 40 is being banned, but I saw here starting in 2027, California, Gavin Newsom signed a bill that prohibits red dye three, potassium bromate, mm. a vegetable oil, and another thing um, going into law. And it's already illegal. Those ingredients are already illegal in the European Union and some other parts of the so world. So Newsom does which, care about us. Yeah, that no. should, should help our crime <laughs> so, and homeless I problem. Know, in I want to know which stuff. lobby, like, what, <laughs> yeah, what's, yeah, what what's the angle here? Because yeah. he's stocking them up because sell them That's the black really market. That's really the root of it all, He has a warehouse. Red dye is the root of all our problems. He just made the red gummy bear. Yeah, yeah. He cornered the red gummy bear market. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you ever seen that? By the way, have you ever seen surprise those? Surprise me. Have you ever seen those memes of like Fruit Loops in America versus Fruit Loops in Europe mm -mm. or what? Have you never seen that? No. Oh, Andrew, look that up. If they'll show the ingredients of like a popular cereal or something. Oh yeah, I've seen this versus one in Europe. Well, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. let's it's, talk about they, this. They use like beet. They use like beet juice to color it. We use like yeah, you know, fifteen chemicals. I swear that's like a cross because when we went out there just recently, like I felt like there was a lot more foods I could eat that I didn't have an immediate reaction to, in terms of like everybody my gut. says that. Yeah, it I was know. weird. It was strange. Even the drinks, like I'm sure there's a lot more uh, added chemicals, preservatives, whatnot here in the states. Something. So, Something. oh, do you have a picture of the ingredients? 
Oh, that's just like, they look different it's, too. So that, right? there's like ones they'll show the actual ingredients and you'll see, there you go. Look at the list of ingredients for the U.S. version versus the German version. Wow. Look at that. Can yeah. you can you read the... Yeah, it's less than half. Bro, there's like seven ingredients in the in the wow. German version. What the Yeah, hell? there's like at least three to four times more in the U.S. Yeah, dude. And then we add all kinds of Okay, now, now inundated okay, yeah, but chemicals. Okay, wait, 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 hold on. A big portion of that, though, is the fortified vitamins. Uh, why yeah. is that not in the German version? And why is that like, look at we made laws. A third of that list yeah, is yeah. Okay, well, read, vitamins. Read the first seven the, the ingredients. The second half is all like, Hold on. B vitamins. Let's, copy, let's read the, let's read the ingredients. Which, Which, by the, okay. By the way, when you're reading an ingredients level, the label, the, the it's in order. Yeah. I know. So the, if you want to know highest. what it predominantly is, right. by the time you get past five, like everything else is like pixie dusting. So right? what's different? So there's uh, hydrogenated the flour. oil. The corn flour, yellow one. corn flour is, is yeah. top on the uh, on the American one, or yeah, on the American one, but not the German one. Yeah, and I think mm. that I know that there's colorings and stuff. So like why that not the we'll fortified go. vitamins in the German one? That's interesting. There was a law a long time ago in the U.S. where yeah. all wheat uh, or or corn ingredients had to be fortified. With um, we made it a law, yeah, because yeah, there was like Strange. deficiencies of like yeah. vitamin and mineral yeah. deficiencies. Like iodine, I think was added to salt for, yeah. for a law for a while ago. Uh, because people were iodine deficient. Yeah, maybe Andrew can go down the rabbit hole and dig a little bit and figure that out. That's really interesting. Yeah, because that's a little bit misleading because literally- Yeah, that's uh -huh. a good call. That yeah, yeah. that bottom half is like all vitamins. Yeah. Totally. It's on that list. So it does look way more dramatic than <laughs> yeah. what it what it really is. Yeah. I mean, it still is a big deal. There's it, 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 there's way more in the US, but it looks crazy when you yeah. look at it from a like a meme or whatever. I know, it's not right? That crazy. Yeah, but what you said, Justin, yeah. is uh, a lot of people have said that when they go overseas- They'll eat yeah. things and they don't. You guys notice that at all? Or just no, me? I did too. I was, I mean, I ate off the diet all, I mean, two weeks now of not following any of my shit. And yeah. I actually did not feel that bad at all. Yeah. That is not what I would expect. Max said that they don't use glyphosates to desiccate their wheat over there. Mm -hmm. mm. So here we blast wheat with, with uh, glyphosate to make it like to dry it. Try it and strengthen it. So, no, it, so it doesn't get moldy or something, end. I guess. Okay. And I think in Europe it's illegal, mm -hmm. so we're not consuming like glyphosate um, residues over there like we are over here. Yeah, for sure. A lot of the the carbohydrates and and wheats and things like that. Yeah. is like way different. Yeah. Actually, how I want to ask you is how nice was it to sleep in your in your, oh. in your normal bed? <laughs> it was like heaven. <laughs> do you guys, sleep, do you I guys mean, sleep like shit when you're gone, like I do? Oh yeah. Yeah. No, this whole. I mean, of all the trips I've ever been on, um, this was the worst. Um, collective sleep that i've ever had. i mean i doug and i pulled our aura ring stuff up to compare and the first five days that we were traveling um one the the plane ride over i didn't sleep at all which you needed to sleep because we were we were flying oh you looked like it's i know oh. that first so day it was right a full 24 hour day where i didn't sleep and then the next four days the most sleep i got was four and a half hours i was just wow yep. yeah i was bad dude oh um, last night was so you know it's funny though so I I forgot that I had uh turned off my the the bed system. The eight sleep. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't realize it because I Katrina asked me to turn it off before I was because it gets too cold for her, and so I shut it down. And I obviously didn't think about it, and I like fell asleep early and was sleeping hard. I woke up briefly, but it was because I my bed heated up and uh -oh. I was not used to it having the control system. So got back mm. up, turned it on real quick and got it recalibrated and then went back to bed. And then I just slept, good. Oh, slept through the whole night, man. Oh. That thing is such a, I mean, you, you don't, it, uh, you don't realize it until you don't have it for a little bit. And then you come back to that. Like what a treat that is to have that control temperature, at mm. least for me, like that's a big deal. Cause I will, I don't care how cold it is out and out, out of the sheets. My body heats up so much that I'll, I'll heat up the sheets big time. Yep. Yeah, I uh, coming home was so nice. Uh, obviously, sleeping in your own bed is nice, but just to see the, the kids and my wife and just it was a long time. I don't like going being yeah, gone that, that was long. A, I think the longest stretch in a long time. I, yeah, yeah. I was talking to Courtney about that. Have like, you guys ever? That's what it was. That was the record for. That's both the Katrina. longest I've ever been away from my little ones um, for sure. I've never been away from Katrina that long. I've never been away from Max that long. Yeah, I yeah. Think, I think Jessica same too. actually. Yeah. That was a long time, man. It was, uh, it, it's rough. It's funny because it, uh, men don't talk about this a lot. And I know why, because I think it makes you sound, or maybe you feel like you're, you're not supposed to talk about this, but after like day two, like uh, two or three days, you know, it's like, oh, we're out, we're doing this thing. It's really cool. After day two or three, I start to get really homesick. And then by the end of the trip, I was really miss, especially, um, the, like I would get on FaceTime mm -hmm. 
and see my kids and they would get excited to see me. And then I talk to Jessica and then hang up and it's like, Oh, God, it's almost worse to do that. It's almost worse to communicate. It's like kind of like, cause yeah. you could just disconnect. Yeah. I, I mean, I, and honestly, like I can't, I can only imagine if this trip was amazing, right? Like London was absolutely amazing. Oh, so great. City blew me away. Yeah. Like I, I, I did not expect to, to love the city as much as I love the city running into people every single day and night um, and getting the chance to spend time with, with fans of the show and, and arc was just incredible. And then to go to Olympia and do that, like just an incredible full day, every single day, nonstop. Yet it still was. So I can only imagine if it was a trip where it wasn't like that. Like if we were just like, it was all leisure and you're kind of chill, like I, that would have like drove Dude, I saw crazy. It was, it was so nice to see yeah. Trina. So she came to get you at the airport mm -hmm. and she ran, runs across, just jumps in his arms like a little girl. Yeah. It was so nice to see that. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I like, know. oh, I can't wait to see my. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was really, really, wife. really nice to see her. And, and then Max wanted me to wake him up. So when I got Did you? To, yeah, yeah. So I woke him up. And, uh, oh, so yeah. I came, when I came home, the kids were sleeping. But I told Jessica specifically, she's like, I know you're tired. I'll, I'll feed the baby. I said, no, no, I want to feed her because I love that, right? So I came home. We, you know, we, Jessica and I hung out a little bit, went to bed. Then the baby woke up to get fed. So I picked her up. And at first she was kind of like, because oh, it wasn't mom, because mom had been doing it. Mm -hmm. And then she reached up because it's dark. She touched my beard and instantly... Oh, just relax on my arms because she realized it was me. Uh, and I was like, oh, yeah. gosh, the best <laughs> feeling ever, man, to do that. So nice, so nice. But ARC was incredible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So people don't Super know. Super inspiring, the, yeah. The Alliance for Responsible Citizens Tree. Uh, it's an event that was hosted by Jordan Peterson. You can watch it on YouTube now. You can watch all the talks mm -hmm. on YouTube. Um, I don't think I've been surrounded by that many like so brilliant. impressive. Yeah. Everybody there was like insanely impressive and, uh, successful oh. in, in their own, uh, industry or w whatever. Uh, you know, it, that was the most interesting part is like artists, like it was like diplomats. It was like entrepreneurs, like intellects. There's just like a whole religious leaders swath of, of interesting people. We were the only fitness people there. Yeah. I was so humbling. Yeah. Because when we were there, I thought, I wonder if we're going to see other health and fitness people. Nobody. Mm -mm. In fact, people would ask us what we did. We'd tell yeah. them, and they were kind of like confused. Like, what do you We mean? stuck out uh, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you guys doing here? It was such an honor to be even chosen to be there. I mean, technically, but you could count Max. Max was there, and he's in the oh, health yeah. space. Yeah, so, I guess so between Max and us. But uh, I, I guess I didn't realize what an honor it was to be even invited, right? It was, one, I wasn't sure what it was going to look like. Two, I didn't know that it was literally handpicked 1,500 people from all over the world. Now, 1,500 sounds like a lot, but when you think about all over the world, uh, to be one of those yeah. 1,500 people that was selected to, to come to this private event and have that opportunity, I thought was just... That was really incredible. And basically the the gist of it, and we're gonna we're gonna talk with Jordan Peterson. So I'd love to talk more in depth with him. But the idea is to really change the narrative. Uh, because the popular narrative that's out there is this really negative oh, yeah. everything you know, doom and gloom. Doom and gloom. Everything. Humans are a cancer. Yeah. Um, you know, and they're like, no, like the 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 story needs to be positive. Humans innovate, we work together. There are common values that have led us to um, accomplishing some incredible things, yeah. um, and we got to make sure that we we worship the common good and not you know all these earthly things. And it, it was really, I mean, just exceptional conversations and talks from people, you know, all over. It was really cool. I mean, many times I, I caught myself getting choked up listening to some of those. Yeah some of those talks. Yeah. And it's interesting. Cause it's like, it's walking the the fine line of like bringing in religious leaders to kind of help inspire or like a bit of politicians, which was also like a bit of a line that they're crossing, but you know, all the, the, the entire like energy there was just to create this positive outlook and, and to really figure out how to like create that abundance for everybody. Well, that was the part that I enjoyed was that, I mean, you had a, a different religions, you had different politicians, but the the common theme of the entire event was to to change the narrative to oh, that, that we have, we have a choice that right? we can make, we can make a better future for ourselves. And instead of complaining or choosing the victim route or, or making humans look like they're this, this you know, parasite on the world, like uh, what can we do as leaders in the space? And so I just, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I have absolutely got emotional several times. I mean, the speakers were just, uh, you guys have a favorite talk. Yeah. 
Oh man, that's a that's a tough one. For Constantine was probably one of my favorites. True, he's fire. Yeah, for me it was Jonathan Page out. Oh, Page out yeah, too. I sure. actually showed my dad that, and he loved it. Oh, yeah. you can watch that on YouTube. It's up there now. But he's talking about like how simultaneously in all of recorded human history, we have more stuff than ever, and yet uh, we're as unhappy as ever. And it was really incredible talk. And yeah, Peja Constantine, I think were two of my favorites too. I really, and it's not up on the YouTube channel. Is the the British teacher? Oh, oh the, yeah. the headmistress. Yes. What was her name? I don't. I mean, maybe Andrew can remember. She. I think she, she was, was serious so when he said good. you could look up Google the strictest yeah. teacher in the strictest world. Strictest teacher. And and I think that her. I, th I think her so name comes good. up, or for sure you could probably do it uh, in in Europe or whatever, and, and put that in and see if her name comes up. She was uh, she was incredible, Catherine. There you go. For ball sing. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. She was amazing. Yeah. Like I, I, and you could just, by the way, doesn't she look like what you would think a headmistress would look yeah, like? Yeah, almost like, like, yeah, out of Harry Potter at yeah. like Academy or yeah, something. Did any of you like, try and Google and see if that was true? If you Googled the strictest teacher in the world or what that, no, if, it, if, uh, if, it, if it popped up? Yeah, no, I think she does. Yeah. Pop up in that search. Oh, wow. oh yeah? yeah! Oh wow! Yeah, see, that's great. She was awesome. Now, favorite. I gotta say though, my favorite. It was Ark was incredible. It was a huge honor. Um, really humbling. But my favorite, favorite, favorite thing about London. The city was amazing. People are great there. By the way, I love English uh, hospitality, humor. Um, I feel very at home there. But I gotta say, my favorite was every night we got to hang out and dine with and just generally just essentially hang out with uh, a listener of the show. And this was just on accident. Somebody yeah. would stop us. We were already on our way to get food or whatever. We'd invite them. And every single night we had somebody come with us. It was just started really out cool. as kind of a random occurrence, right? We're at the a pub and then, uh, you know, we, we get met by somebody outside that uh, is like, oh, hey, you know, I love your guys' show. And then we go right. have a drink. Yeah, come hang out with us. Yeah. And we're hanging out with them all night. Just chat. That yeah, so I, awesome. I would say that was probably one of my favorite things too. Just And it, because it happened so organically too, it wasn't like we set out to go do that or made this deal that, hey, if we run into people, we're going to take them or this. It was just... We were doing our own thing and, and traveling around, and it seemed that every single it was every single day, every single day, and it was it was interesting because it was always like right before we were about to go get dinner, or right before we we're gonna go head to a pub and go have drinks, and we would randomly meet somebody and end up talking to them on the street and say, "Hey, we're we're gonna go to a pub right now and get some drinks," or "Hey, we're gonna go get dinner. You want to come with us?" And they'd all like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> And then we'd end up taking them all night long and they just hang out with us. So, so fun. Yeah. I love, I absolutely loved it. it great, great hearing all the stories yeah, cool. too, man. Everybody that we met were just really, really interesting. I do got to say along those lines, you mentioned pub. I always learn this lesson when I travel. Foods that you eat, let's say outside of the country of origin, you'll have a perception of those foods and you'll think, oh, this is what, this is what fish and chips taste like, for example. It's not that big of a deal, whatever. It is way better when you eat it in London. Way better. I had fish and chips over there. I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Versus like, you know, fish and yeah, chips I've had here. That's not sort so of good. their staple. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> my, uh, my, the, the couple we met, um, where the young lady, I can't remember her name. I think it was Tony. I'm going to pull it up. I have her before and after. Cause that was a crazy story where yeah. she, let me see. Yeah. Tony and Christian. She went from a very unhealthy place to a very healthy place. Yeah, right. Right Showed before, before the, or right when the pandemic hit, she was chronically under eating. She was overtraining, doing cardio like crazy, and and then she looked like it. Like if you could just imagine what a the young lady picture. who was yeah. uh, under eating and overtraining, just you know, she was this kind of frail uh, little body that obviously didn't look like she lifted weights. Looked like she just ran and starved her body. And then to see what she did in a year's time, it, it actually didn't look believable. I mean, yeah. except for that we had the pictures and saw yeah. her in person. And so her transformation was just incredible and yeah. unreal to see. Man, yeah. so, Such a cool Pretty story. Yeah. And she's just like, yeah, I was one of those people that just abused cardio and didn't, and, and just under eight. And I guess it, her, her boyfriend was the one that was like, you got to lift, you got to eat. And, you know, got her to kind of forced her to listen to us. And yeah. then it made an impact. And, it was crazy though. I so um, this the third time, or I've been to the UK, um, but like two out of three times, like some incident happens at home I didn't know about that. Like you know, uh, so my family was trying to kind of keep it from me, so I didn't stress out or worry or anything. Oh shit! What happened? Yeah. So like first time, like my mother in law that was watching my kids, she broke her leg, and I kind of explained oh, yeah. that story last time. So this time, like 
my dad was moving his uh, hot rod and turns out that like he, it stalled and, and he had some neighbors trying to help him kind of move the car across the street. And I guess he had one foot inside um, the oh, car God. and trying to steer and basically missed like the pedal. I don't know. He was trying to tell me like all the details of how this happened. Cause I'm like, what, how did you not tell me? Basically he got run over by his own car oh, on shit. his legs. And he's already had like two knee surgeries. And so he's just recovered from that. And then like, I have pictures and everything of his legs, but like he, thank God, nothing broke, you know, on his legs didn't break, but like he has these crazy bruises and Wait, like, the compression car ran over and literally break like his he legs? fell down and then, then the car ran over his legs and they didn't break he's six, seven. And, and he's like, he was trying to jump out of the way and you know, his legs were still there. Nothing broke. Nothing broke. Holy just cow. Bump, bump. And cool. then like, uh, actually the, the car itself kind of went into like a, a leaf pile and, and stopped itself and nothing happened. And, but uh, I was like, Dad, what? Dude, like, <laughs> you're not going to tell me you had to go to the hospital and everything. And so anyways, it's just like, oh, man, I hate that. Like, I'll go leave on some, like, long trip. And then, like, you know, two out of three times, something crazy happens. Yeah, that's going to cause you to be all weird yeah. every time you leave. Now. I'm going to be super know. paranoid <laughs> next time we go anywhere, dude. Hey, can I talk to John? Uh, John can't come to the phone right now. He's busy. Wait did, a minute. What's going on with John? Did that happen at the beginning of the trip or towards the middle? It was, like, in the middle. Oh, and, wow. And so, yeah. That's he, crazy he didn't break his legs, though. I know it's, it is. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, he's it, got some strong ass bones. I mean, does, for reals. He does. Yeah. He's I a mean, big he, boy. you yeah. should see his calves. You think I got calves, dude. That, oh, is that where you oh, got your calves from? Oh my God. Not from all your Way calf races. Because <laughs> 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 you walk on your toes. No, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't wear my high heels that you much. Bounce around but, all the time. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then, and then we went to the Olympia on the way back, which was, it was really cool. We met a lot of fans there and uh, we worked the transcend booth, which was really cool. How funny was it though? When we, went oh to, my God. we went to Michael Hearn's booth. That was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that was the first time that Justin and I had the pleasure of like meeting him in person since great guy. Since you, uh, him and Mona. Yeah, life. he seems like a super cool Loved guy. Him. Yeah, and I, and I know you spoke highly of him. Um, you know, off air talking about your experience with go, you know going to their home and and hanging out with his, his wife and him, and just said that like you know we would absolutely love them, and so. Uh, I totally got that impression when we ran into him. And I mean, you could tell that he's actually a fan of the show, right? You could tell by the way he reacted when he saw Justin and I. Well, and he's over. working a booth with a competitor. So we we were representing Transcend. You guys all had t-shirts that say Transcend. Yeah. yeah. He's working a different booth, oh, which man, is their you own could, peptide. You could tell. Yeah. He, I don't know if that was his COO or who that was, but you could tell he was pissed. Yeah, so he jumps over. Basically, he's a lion waiting for him. <laughs> he he so stops angry. everything to come say hi to us, jumps yeah. over and takes pictures with us. And you guys are wearing like transcend shirts, and that's the yeah. competitor. And yeah. so that guy, whoever that guy was, was so. Bad. Oh, he tried to tell him no, and you could tell he tried to tell no, no, no. He was barking at Mike, and Mike just pfft, kind of blew him off, and then still hopped over to come yeah, over. And, but it. you could tell he was not happy about that whatsoever. I mean, I would have. I mean, I would have covered the shirt up just for just out of respect if I would have like picked up on it. Yeah, faster. I didn't even no, know that no was, was the thing on. he was like, mad about. Yeah. It like dawned on me afterwards. It's like, I didn't realize, I'm like, why was that dude mean mugging? And why was he so <laughs> adamant about like Mike not taking like a their picture? biggest competitor. Right? Yeah. And then I realized like, oh shit, Justin and I, we have all the transcend on this. He was at his medical booth uh, and I'm like, oh God, that's hilarious. Yeah, but I love transcend. They literally are like, uh, like signing every name in, in, oh, in yeah. that whole like segment of fitness. Like everybody was at that booth, man. Dude. Like, Everybody you could think of. What was crazy is, you know, when you go to one of these conventions, you're going to see the most extreme bodies you've ever seen in your life. Okay. It's just obviously. I saw some, what, like the, the, the extreme male bodies are always like shocking and impressive, but I saw some women that I, like, it doesn't even, I don't understand. Yeah, it didn't compute. It was like, like, whoa. If you're not part of the space, you never go to this convention, just picture this. Okay. Imagine me with an additional, 20 pounds of muscle and way more shredded. There were women like that walking mm -hmm. around literally where you they're walking around and they got traps. Yeah. And, and you're just like, like <sighs> now I know people are like, Oh, that's all steroids. Yeah. Steroids play a role, but that's also crazy genetics because I could take all the steroids in the world. I wouldn't look like those girls. Yeah. It was, it's crazy to see some of these, the, the development yeah. of some of these people. Insane. I'm it's been like, uh, it's been close to nine years, I think, since I'd, you know, been hanging around uh, Olympia or anything like that. And I was, I was really impressed with just the, what a spectacle it's become. I mean, yeah. when I was in the circuit, it wasn't, uh, I mean, it was mainstream and it was getting popular and it was, the conventions were still kind of a big deal, but 
man, the amount of money that's behind these things now, uh, everything yeah. from the booths that were set up to the amount of, you know, famous people that were in and out of there to the stage and the lighting and the sound system. I saw the, Shaquille O'Neal was watching I was so the mad. We, yeah, I didn't know he was there. I would have yeah, no, the row. Yeah, yeah, no, there's, there, was a, there was a bunch of famous people that were in and out of there. You and, know what was yeah. weird was that Chris Bumstead got less money than the winner of the Physique Olympia. Chris Bumstead isn't has he the, like the most popular one? He's got the biggest social media poll, I think, of all of them. That's yeah, interesting. I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah, I'm not sure how they how they justify that. I don't know if it that's based off of entries, right? So maybe there is a lot more people that enter to um, you know, men's physique. Has physique became, been around longer than classic? Yes. Maybe that's why. Because yeah. slowly over time it's built up. Yeah, well, I mean, so uh, yeah, but why though? Why does that matter? Is it because the like I said, the entries or like why it would be the, yeah. how long? Because if if Bumstead is far more famous than you know, say like Ryan Terry who won Men's Physique, like why why are they getting paid more? What I would assume is that it has more to do with like entries. So I would think that based off of that, like you would get, and you know, and I know that Olympia, the yeah, but the Open has the biggest paycheck, the, and there's got to be less entries for the Open. Yeah, well, I think the whole show is built around them, right? I mean, that's how this sure. whole thing started was, you know, like they used to be just them, right? I don't mm -hmm. know if they even had all the all the other categories. They didn't, didn't exist. Yeah, it didn't even exist. Yeah, it was just, so it was just Olympia. That's I it. think yeah. that the, they're probably always going to get the, the biggest piece of the pie since they're the origin. But I think the popularity behind men's physique and bikini must drive more entries, which then drives more revenue maybe. I don't know. It's It's weird to me that... Uh, you know, like Chris Bumstead would, I mean, it was like $50,000 was the first place. Yeah. First place. That and, covers his like hmm. July bill for food. Yeah. yeah I right. think, and then I think men's physique was like 90, I uh -huh. think for, the, for their first place. I wasn't, I don't remember what bikini was. I don't think we sat through that or not, but I mean, fascinating though, to see the growth of it. And, and also really fascinating to me to see like people floating around. Uh, like you were saying, like Shaq that are like ultra famous, but then to, to see these, lines for basically like just famous influencers oh, I mean, yeah just around just to take a pick you know for the ground yeah it's because so when i when i was coming in like so nine years ago was the last time but i was before that i was even going to some shows so let's say 12 13 years ago you would show up to one of these things and ronnie coleman or jay cutler yeah the basically winners of competition yeah yeah so if you were like you know mr olympia jay cutler ronnie coleman type of guy um, the place would just be, that's where the lines would be at. And that's all the lines would be at. And then you'd have all these like supplement booths that people would stop by to grab some samples and stuff. And obviously somebody hacked into this or figured this out because now every supplement company or every booth has at least two or three, you know, influencers that are attached to it and that draw all the traffic and attention. Yeah. And, and these mm -hmm. kids line up and wait to to talk to or to take just Some take a picture most of them don't even want to talk to them most of them it's just like busting through to take a picture with some of these influencers and it, i thought man that's so wild how i mean there was a point where ronnie coleman was you know in his wheelchair right next to us and i felt like nobody was even paying attention mm -hmm. to him like nobody was even talking to him or anything but then oh god like if a influencer come walking by that has it's two, interesting yeah totally people screaming place. going crazy uh -huh. and, and taking pictures it's like god that's so so weird it's, it's to have been there before <laughs> and then to come around afterwards and kind of see the the difference. It's interesting. I mean, yeah, it's super interesting. I, and the reason why Chris Bumstead, even though he's the champion of his category, he's so popular is his social media. He's got a huge social media presence. He's also, you know, obviously he talks really well and he's on lots of podcasts. It's his mustache, let's be honest. He's got, um, he's got a, yeah. I will say this. I, I, I mean, he's got one of my favorite physiques. I think his physique is sick. I think classics is that's where bodybuilding should be. You know, that whole category, just, just enough muscle to where they look like crazy, amazing, but the open, it just gets too much. Well, I mean, the, the truth is though, people want to see the crazy, right? Like people, there's more people that will aspire to look like Chris Bump yeah. said, but everybody still wants to see. Well, when you see freaks. a real. Everybody wants to see what is the craziest the extreme. Yeah. yeah. That we can push the human body. And so. Well, when you see a real pro bodybuilder in front of you, like a top level one, it's weird. It's just the, the the muscle and the development of the shape is just yeah. It is so Dude, mutant. Shoulders are like this wide. It's so it's wild. Yeah. It's so crazy to see. Yeah, I, and you know, 
it's to your point too about like everybody thinks it's just drugs. It's like there's such a massive genetic oh, role God. that plays. Like remember when people used to ask me like why I stopped or why wouldn't I keep going and do it? I'm like, I was not made for this. Like genetically, I am not made to be a bodybuilder. Like I've yeah. built a good physique and I could use all the drugs in the world, but the people that win that stay at the top of this, they've got both working for them. They've got all the drugs and they got all that discipline and they've got the genetics to be able to be these superstars. Like they are genetic freaks on top of doing all the other stuff. In fact, I would make the case that some of these guys that are the the most famous for their physiques, the amount of drugs is way less than a lot of people think they are. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not taking them a lot of drugs. I mean, we've talked about this before, like, you know, the Ronnie Coleman's, the Ronnie Flex Coleman Wheelers. Ronnie top 10 Olympia natural. Yeah, yeah, these guys were already yeah. winning Olympia shows before they even introduced the drugs. Yes, the drugs took them to a crazy level, but I mean, even our friend Ar Aria, Aria was uh, competing on the Olympia stage natural, Yeah, you know, and then he took testosterone afterwards. And so, yes, it took his physique to another level. But I mean, you, you have to have the genetics and the discipline and the hard work first, like before, even before that totally. stuff. Something else I learned on this trip. I had no idea that you were a photographer, Adam. I had no, <laughs> in, it was so funny. Yeah, in, I am uh, not a photographer. Random, listen, <laughs> Justin and I were so, we were like, what's yeah, going on? Yeah. We would be walking through London and then Adam would grab, and his iPhone, it's not like you have a camera, you use your iPhone. And you were like climbing up on things, standing at you, angles, you're seeing all squatting the, down, laying down to get the right angle. All and the just potential portraits. Spending like hours. Like you just like, Justin and I eventually left. We walked off because you were just taking pictures of things from different angles. I'm like, what is he? What's happening? Well, first of all, he's taking it in. First of all, <laughs> yeah, I when we first were planning this trip, we almost didn't do London. Like we were gonna like drop in for Arc and then and then bounce out of London and go over to Italy or some other places that we talked all of us going and and really that what that was because I think at that time Justin and Doug were the only ones that have been over there really and they were like ah it wasn't it wasn't one of my favorite cities I'd rather go somewhere new or different and so I had a very low. Uh, expectation for what the city was going to be like. And I left London saying that was, that's my favorite city I've ever been to. Now I'm not the most world traveler, but I've been to beautiful places all over the United States. I've been to Paris. You're I've like been... a big fan of architecture. I did yeah. not know that. So, and that's the part that I think yeah. that London doesn't get enough love for is that it, what it had, because, and I also somebody made a, a point about Rome and Paris. I'm like, listen, Rome and Paris, I'm not saying that they're not, that the tar architecture there has even more history and is even more beautiful. But what it, what I love about London is it has both. It has, it has the it has the history, and then it has like new modern, and so the blend of that is just unique. I mean, it's contrast. It, yeah, the contrast is. Well, you there was a, a one night Doug and I stayed out late to go sightseeing more, and we took the Uber boat, which is really cool. They have this Uber boat that travels all the way down uh, the river. That's so the only you, way we're going to travel next time we're back. Oh, yeah. totally. That's yeah. the that's the move to go Faster. to go. Oh, it's super fast and it's cool. It's, and and you go under. I don't know. I'd say ten bridges, maybe Doug or so, roughly ten bridges. And so you, you'll go under once. So you go under like you know the the Tower Bridge, which has probably got the most history right in London as far as as far as how old it is and mm -hmm. how beautiful it is and the lighting is like amazing. And you'll go like two more bridges down, and then all of a sudden you'll see this like super modern looks like it was built in the last you know 20 years or less and it's all lit up and designed differently i mean and so you'll see that like just think that's i mean you know i've never experienced the city like that and then everything at night was lit up just epic it was just you know everything was a postcard so yeah, it was definitely. It was, it was just funny watching you just run like with your phone. With <laughs> well, your and the there. audience doesn't know this. I've talked to Doug off air uh, a bunch of times about wanting to get into it. Obviously, Doug is the photographer of all of us, and I've always been fascinated. I don't know if I've ever told you guys this or not, but the very uh, one of the first, like not first business, but one of the first businesses I ever started was a photography business when I was nineteen ish, twenty ish. Wait, 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 what? Yeah, so I started you started a photography with my with my two best friends uh, called Cali Myrna uh, Photography, and the idea of it back then was to have a business write off to do all the cool shit that we did. So we, I, I was into you know off roading stuff with like my ATV. We were into so you just take photos of it all, snowboarding, and wakeboarding, and so the idea and concept was <laughs> let's start this photography <laughs> business, and it'll it'll we'll be able to write off all of our toys and write off all of our trips where we do these toys. And so it started that way. Now, I never really took it far enough to get really good with the camera. My best friend did. It ended up being a, a pretty, you know, he's not like famous, but he, he's had his photos in some some places and 
has shot a lot of landscape photography that I have hung up in my house that you guys have probably seen, don't even know it. That's from him. And he kept going. He kept the business going. It became his and he did really well. He ended up taking wedding for it. So I've always had like a thing for it and liked it. I just never have taken the time to discipline myself because those cameras aren't easy to work. Like they're like, they take a lot of- They're also expensive, the lenses. Yeah. Are super expensive. Yeah, and you gotta really understand like lighting and, and speed and all that stuff like that, like to be able to get like the perfect picture. And so I have an appreciation for it and I've always wanted to get into it. You were um, so into it. It's, yeah. It was, I did not expect that. Yeah. No more than Doug. I feel like Doug was just in. <laughs> well, I expect Doug to get into yeah, it. Yeah. I don't expect you to disappear and to get Doug into it. Doug would just run off, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah I love at it. it. Actually, Adam, I think, has a real talent for composition. So oh, yeah. uh, I think he'd do well once he gets a good camera. But yeah. I have to apologize to London because the last time I was there, I was with somebody that we were having a rough time. <laughs> and so I think maybe that tainted my view of London. So when I reported back to you guys, ah, London, I don't really care about London. Yeah. I've changed my mind. I, I really like it. Yeah, I feel well, like you, you and I mean, we had such a, you know, we had a blast. speaking of photos yeah, and Doug, you know, you know, what it was really cool and interesting to experience was, so I didn't know that um, there's a lot of strict rules around um, tripods and these, these oh, expensive yeah. lenses. <laughs> When you're photographing, um, you know, some of this stuff. Well, buildings in particular. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Doug got some security guy came over and said, hey, you can't be using your tripod and fire like that. And so Doug put the tripod away. And then we're like, literally like five minutes or 10 minutes later, we're walking further down the pier. And Doug's taking this beautiful, you know, modern looking building that's right, right on the other side of all the other old stuff. He's like taking cool photos. And the guy, the same guy come over to him and bust his balls again about it, about taking photos in there. And it's, it's because you have these high powered lenses. Yeah, you don't want peeping toms. Right. Yeah. And so, but the thing that I thought was so cool was the way the guy checked us. Like, so polite. Yeah. He was so friendly and polite. And I thought, man, in, if that was in, an American cop, in America, <laughs> you got your ass first of all, he would have been a dick to Doug the first time. Yeah. But definitely if he was checking him a second time for the same thing, basically, that guy would have been a complete He'd asshole. Throw you in the car. And this yeah. guy like took the time to explain the reason why yeah. and was like, you know, super, up. he was apologetic about telling us, you know, the rules and that he had to put it away. And I just thought, man, the, the, the culture over here is, is such a, it's now so here's different. the deal. So I, so I did a post about how the friendly, the people were there. And it was funny because people from England, from other parts of England are like, what? London's <laughs> terrible. The people are yeah. assholes over there, whatever. Right. I'm like, they were so nice. And I'm like, oh, the context is, must be different for them because we're used to here, Silicon Valley, where everyone is an asshole. Yeah. And, and they nobody gives ignore you. Everybody yeah. ignores you. And then I thought, oh, it's true because when I went to Arkansas, when I've been to Tennessee, mm -hmm. people are super friendly. Totally. So it's really just here, dude. We're right here. Everybody's just Silicon Valley. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah, yeah they're yeah, just yeah. assholes. Nobody oh, it's hard too when dicks. when we're you know basically born and raised in this. The, you you pluck us out of here and you put us in. You those. notice the differences. Yeah, I mean, I even catch myself right because it's everything's so fast paced in the bay area and heaven forbid somebody walking in front of you stops to look at something like oh, yeah. you fucking want to uh, lose your shit yeah, yeah and so i actually felt that in me a few times of my like my my natural reaction and like oh shit like i can't i can't act like that like nobody's that everybody's like so yeah, they're all patient yeah they're all patient like you oh, it's it's not it's not weird at all to be walking in a crowd under the the subway area and then like a group of four people just oh stop and talk to somebody or just stop to look at something right in front of you and you got to kind of wait or go around them like that happens all day long and nobody really is, you know, get upset about it. Where God, that happens in the States. Like, I've never been to New York shit. city, but I heard New York city people are rude. That's what I've heard. <laughs> yeah, I've well, heard they're really, it's like a badge, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, there's a lot of name calling and, you know, yeah. <laughs> but it's like a term of endearment you Maybe. Know, in their eyes, right? Like, ah, fuck you, fuck you. And it's like, hello. <laughs> you know? yeah. It's like a thing. Yeah. Just ask them. Well, I know in New York, they like, and I, I guess uh, Paris was like this too. They like use the horn as like a, like a courtesy. So like to get someone like hot, like here, if, in the, if someone in California lays on the horn, it's like, a, it's like you yeah. give them the finger. It's like, fuck you. Where in places like in Paris, and I think in New York is like this too. It's like a more of a courtesy. Mm -hmm. People are always honking their horn. It's more to let you know, Dude, like, hey, I'm right by you. I got to tell you guys, we're speaking of cars. I got to tell you something that happened this morning. It's so funny. So I got back the day after was we did Aurelius' birthday. It was really fun. Like, we had this great day planned. And the main gift we got him 
was this car that he could drive. Now this car is pretty rad. Like it's got a key that you could turn. I can control it with a with a controller just in case he's gonna go wild. Modern power wheel. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. So anyway, all he wants to do is that, right? So this morning, Jessica and I are working out really early. He wakes up, she brings him in because he wants to watch me work out, but then he sees his car. Can I drive my car? Oh, oh crap. Okay. I'll let you drive your car. That's fine. So we take him and he goes out into the backyard. We have this huge backyard. And Jessica has the controller, but she's also holding the baby because then <laughs> Dahlia woke up and whatever. So I'm working out. All of a sudden, you guys remember the commercial for Kool-Aid? Mm-hmm. Remember what Kool-Aid did? Oh, yeah. He just breaks Plus through the wall. Through, yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm working out. And my son, my son drives his car through the garage door. <laughs> so there's a side door. Okay. There's a side door. And I just see <laughs> his car. And he's like frozen. I'm like, holy shit. What happened? <laughs> I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. Uh, but he literally just breaks through. Oh, my God. And then he's like, he starts crying. He got scared. He didn't get hurt, right? Yeah, he starts yeah, crying yeah. or whatever. So I tried to flip it. So I'm like, your car is strong. Look at not a single scratch. He's like, oh, my car is stuck. Might backfire. I hope he doesn't like start running. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. He's smashing yeah, it <laughs> But it was just like, so I'm working out and literally randomly, all of a sudden, I just see him drive through the door. Yeah. You know, just I wanted the bottom you to catch, part. you didn't catch a uh, video reaction. We all wanted to see the reaction when he saw it. You saw the video. You shared a video of him driving it, but we all wanted to see the. I think I have it. I think I'll send it to you. Guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's. Uh, did you do that? I mean, did you set yeah, it up? Like, how did you? How did you present it to him? You kept talking about. I said we have something in the garage for you, and uh, you know, I think you. I think my car had a, had a son, for, so that you could play with or something like that, because he loves my car. Yeah, yeah. So we went out there, and he was just he was so pumped, dude, so pumped. You know what he wanted for his birthday? If you ask him, what do you want for your birthday? Huh. White cake. I don't know why he wanted white cake. White so cake. we got him white cake. I mm. love white cake, and he was excited. Well, why don't he, Why don't white's my favorite? When he fa- when he came uh, when he walked out of his room, we had balloons up, and he's a huge fan of cars, right? The, the the animated film cars. So Jessica had a bunch of cars balloon, and she was playing the theme, all the theme songs from Cars. Yeah, this kid man, he comes out and he's like, oh, oh my gosh, it's it's Lightning McQueen. He goes. And the music matches the balloons. He said that. I'm like, this kid, man. <laughs> That's funny. So, you so just funny. reminded me. So Katrina was telling me last night that she had a conversation with Max while while we were gone. My birthday's coming up, right? So she was talking to Max. Hey, do you want to, let's get daddy something for his birthday. What do you want to get? I want to get him a watch. And Katrina goes, How does he know? Yeah, I mean, he knows. He's been playing with my watches since the beginning. So obviously he knows I like him, right? So she's like, oh, pick a different gift. Mommy, did, mommy can't afford one of daddy's <laughs> yeah, watches. And, and he was like super adamant. No, 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 no. I want to give him a watch. She should let get... him pick whatever watch oh, and yeah. he can wear it when you go home. Of so course, so, of yeah. course. I would, But I thought, it, I thought it was hilarious <laughs> that she was like, tried, she tried to like change the subject awesome. to something else. And he was like super adamant about it. I want to get daddy a watch. I want to get daddy that's a watch. So awesome. And she's like, no, we're not getting daddy a watch. Oh, that's <laughs> get, so great. We'll get daddy's. That's else. So <laughs> All right, so we're, we're gonna we're supposed to mention Organifi, and I tell you what, we basically announced their new Shilajit product, right? Yeah, I really like it. Yeah, tons I, of messages. Oh, okay, you are getting stuff. Yes. Right. So for people who don't know, a lot of people have never heard of Shilajit, which is interesting because it is one of the most studied Ayurvedic compounds there is. Probably, I would say it's up there with ashwagandha. Okay. And it's got, it's not just that they've used it for thousands of years and it, it was used in, as an aphrodisiac. It was used to improve uh, libido, vitality, health, reduce inflammation. It also has lots and lots of studies showing that it actually uh, works. The reason why I was excited about Organifi is they got a really good form of Shilajit uh, in their in their gummies or whatever. And then they made the gummies taste good. Shilajit yeah. doesn't taste good. Like, yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how they figured that out. Yeah. But, they, they have but a it tastes good. Way and and it's that. a full serving of Shilajit. In, in, in. Mushroom, herb, what what exactly? It is literally black tar yeah. substance like that seeps through. From like a tree? No, seeps through mountainsides. It, okay, what it is, is literally ancient forests. Yeah. That have been decomposed and broken down for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. I mean, wouldn't years. you say it's comparable to topsoil? It's just in like tar form, right? Uh, it's so condensed. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of compounds. Because it's in, all like. So, do you know the history of like what it was used before obviously we got a hold of it and decided to try it for different things? Like, what, what was the common use of it? Libido, vitality, health. It's like an all encompassing um, adaptogenic compound. So, for health. So, it's up there. Like I said, it's up there with ashwagandha. But it's, it's, so we know one of the compounds, fulvic acid is in there. There's lots of health benefits to fulvic acid, but there's a little bit of a mystery as to why this actually raises testosterone in men with low testosterone, why it's been shown to improve cognitive function. I mean, again, all backed by 
actual data. And who was the first to like stick their finger in there and be like, hmm. there's always that guy, right? Yeah. There's right? always that Who's guy. That guy? I'm like, so tar. curious about that stuff mm. all the time. Like, and then it, it, obviously back then when we they must have been that, hungry as hell. Well, just starving, think, you know? <laughs> yeah, just think right? though, the, the thing that I think is always interesting about like, like Eastern medicine and, and herbs and things like this is that we didn't have the technology. We didn't have the ability to study it the way we do yeah. now. And like to prove the science behind it. So obviously one, somebody or some people's, did it and did it enough to like recognize like, Oh, I'm feeling this stuff from it to keep, to, to pass it on for so long. Like it obviously I think some of it was accident. Like the first people to eat psilocybin mushrooms were probably right. like starving. They're like, uh, these might be poison, but we're starving. Eat them. And they're mm. like, I see God. <laughs> so that's like one example. Then the other one is they witness animals. So horny goat weed. Okay. This is a plant that definitely boosts libido. They say it raises testosterone. Probably not, but it does raise uh, libido. They saw goats eating it and they were yeah, fucking they each other like crazy. Each and that's why they Correct. Just, that's really how it went yeah. down? Correct. Yeah. Really? That's the story. The story is they saw goats eating it. Then the goats would get all like into it and they'd start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. What's the sound? Yeah. <laughs> so then I wonder, I wonder then if that's true about this. Like you saw like a deer licking the tar and then all of a sudden they start humping each other and you're like, yeah, I should try that. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> hmm. I don't know. But there was definitely my wife's turned me down three nights in a row. Let's see if I put it in her just, food tonight. See kicked, how that goes. She got kicked out of the cave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah, starving. Yeah. Oh fuck. <laughs> She says I don't put out enough. Oh, yeah. that's I'm so hungry. I'll eat anything. Wow. I'll eat yeah. this black as strong as it used to be. Yeah. yeah, but Doug, what is it? What are the what is the benefits there? Say because there's a lot of studies that support its use. It's pretty wild. Yeah, so it's a blackish brown resin that contains over 40 minerals and substances, most notably fulvic acid. Uh, it's been used in Ay Ayurvedic medicine, um, treats conditions such as iron deficiency, anemia. And it also has evidence that suggests it's also an antioxidant and has anti-inflammatory okay, properties. Okay, so one of the main mm -hmm. ingredients is fulvic acid that's yeah. in it. Okay, so that's like, that's the, um, remember that other water company bef yeah. before Pathwater we yeah. were talking to? Yeah, I can't remember. Blackwater, there right? Is there it Blackwater? Is it? That's their main thing is the fulvic acid it's in it and all the benefits that yeah. come from that. Yes, but there's more. Because the studies that support um, shilajit are better than the studies that, support fulvic acid although fulvic acid has benefits well i'm assuming that's because it has fulvic acid and other things correct mm -hmm. right so it's correct. got all the benefits that fulvic acid has in addition to all the other compounds yes. look at this may generally we're like mineral deficient you know like the the population is very mineral deficient. yeah and that's so that's the thing there's compounds that we don't even know yeah that are in there that we haven't isolated yet so i can't tell you exactly what it is we just know that we've people have been consuming it for thousands of years it's been used for those purposes for thousands of years and we do have data to support it Look at that. Even may improve exercise performance and recovery. There was a study that showed that tied it to improve strength um, from strength training. So huh. it's, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say this right now. It is the next big supplement. Now here's what the supplement industry does. They're going to overblow the shit yeah, out of it. The, the and there's going to be different it. variations yeah. of it and all kinds of weird stuff. And look, no supplement is going to change your life. Um, unless of course you, you fill a nutrient deficiency, which is something you need. But uh, Shilaji is up there. Like I said, it's one of the supplements that are that is non-nutrient deficiency filling that I would say has got some value. But um, we're going to see it start to blow up. More now, people are talking about it. Is it like? Did you? Is it an adaptogen? So would it go in the category? I would put it there. So mm. you'd put it in, yeah. and and would you take it uh, independently of ashw ashwagandha? Or could you take it together? Like you can take them together. Okay, so yeah. hmm, that'd be interesting. Yeah, you to can do. take them together. I, but although I don't know if you'd necessarily want to, it might be an interesting. Uh, alternating stack, you know, where you do one for a while and then do the other one for a while. To kind of compare. The, the thing about some of these compounds is I notice great benefits in the first three months and then it seems like I don't necessarily get anything. So I'll go off. But we'll see. I have never taken Shilajit for longer than in a couple months. So now that we have it with We're Organifi. coming close to a month or, well, I guess we did have a two week break because yeah. you didn't take it with you. I don't think. No, no, yeah. No. So, but we were starting to take it consistently. I mean, I haven't put my finger on it yet. What exactly what it is that I like about it because I just I feel good from it. Mm -hmm. I, and I think that's why I think it, I asked about it being like ashwagandha. It has that ashwagandha kind of good feeling. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You know, like stress it gives, it's a st adaptogen. Yeah. Feels, you know, yeah. It's, I, I mean, I get the similar feeling when I take the green juice from Organifi that has that same kind mm -hmm. of effect to me where it's like, um, it's not like a caffeine energy feel. It's not like it just improves my overall kind of mood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It feels like that. Nothing that it's so strong. You feel it like jittery or anything weird like that. It just feels good.
Do you guys see there's been um, a few of these crazy ass sports I've brought up on the show a few times? Like, you know, when you've seen some guys in, in a inside a um, telephone booth, like fighting <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. or them. like like levels where people kind of almost chase each other. And then they fight and then like there's groups fighting. of people that fight each other. Yeah. Anyways, like lots of crazy ideas. And usually it's in Russia where a lot of these sports are happening. Well, there was a new one that I was like dying laughing because it was just like, wow, this is so brutal and hilarious that somebody thought of it. There was like, basically there was like th four bars. So it created this like square. And so each guy had to hang from oh, the bar yeah, you showed me this. and, and then, and then this, this, uh, contraption lifts up the bar. So they're all hanging from the bar. And now what they try to do is basically knock each person Kick off. Kick each other off. And so they're kicking, they're punching each other, like, as they're hanging to be, like, the last one standing on the bar. And it's so brutal. Oh, my God. And hilarious. It's actually hilarious. Yeah. And it's like, where, I just want to know who comes up with these yeah. things. This, like what would the strategy be? Uh, I feel like the strategy would be- Grab them with your legs and rip them down. What do you mean? Yeah, not, you could, like, yeah. grab, pull, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, use yeah. your body weight. Yeah, but some, then you're, you're pulling you yourself them. down. I almost feel like putting your feet over their shoulders, resting your body weight. Yeah. on them so they have to carry your body weight like, with that with kick their, their grip you know yeah. so ah. oh they're blasting each other dude. yeah he showed me the video it was hilarious oh my oh, god so funny they, didn't they do that and that remember that show that you watched the the hundred oh, strike yeah, hundred yeah, one yeah, didn't yeah. they do something like that where they, he, that one they just hung they just hung they, they couldn't hit each, they other. Couldn't hit each other no uh, i couldn't remember what, it, what they did i never finished that that yeah. show no. was, yeah i love it i'll keep my eye out more brutal sports uh i think for shout out today we should actually send some love to the the uh what tony right that's her name was yeah, I think we should show the before and afters. Yeah, of that's a good what idea. She did. I think that we have is, her Instagram page. So we'll yeah, yeah. So I'll have, I'll have and the, the you sent. Did you send the photos to the YouTube team? I will now. Yeah, send the photos yeah. to the YouTube team. That way, the people watching could see this transformation. I just think it's like such yeah. a testament to Super inspiring. Yeah, I mean the increasing calories and strength training and just, what how what a dramatic of a difference that you can do even in a year's time. Uh, with proper nutrition and feeding the body and strength training, right? Joy Mode is a product designed to improve blood flow, okay? So you'll get better pumps in the gym, but you'll also get better pumps in the bedroom. No joke, this stuff is backed by clinical data to improve the quality of your sex life. Check them out. Go to usejoymode.com forward slash mind pump. Uh, and on that link, use the code mind pump and you'll get 20% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Nick from Utah. Nick, what's happening? What up? How can we help hey you? Hey, guys. How you doing? How's what's it up? Going? Good, good. Good. Feels, feels uh, awesome to be on your podcast. I've listened to you guys so much over the last year. It feels like I'm talking to a bunch of old friends. So I uh, appreciate all the content, everything you guys do. Yeah, thank awesome. you, man. What you got for us? All right. Um, so I've been, um, I've been uh, lifting for about a year now. Um, found your podcast about a year ago. Uh, made some really good progress overall. Um, I, uh, I ran through anabolic. Um, well, uh, let's see. I ran through anabolic over the summertime. I saw some, my, my lifts really go up across the board. Um, I got my deadlift up to about 315 or so, started at 225. And really my, my overarching question is, is it realistic to get my deadlift from where it's at now to 400 pounds by this time next year? So a full 12 months from now? Yeah. And you've been training consistently, strength training for a year? About, yep. And now within that period of time, MAPS Anabolic was the only MAPS programming you followed. Before that, what did you do? So I was doing your typical like push-pull legs, okay. five days a week training before, okay. I, before I started MAPS Anabolic. And I saw some significant gains through that progress, but really introduced it, introduced deadlifting uh, to my lifts, um, with anabolic. And by the way, I've kind of started anabolic recently again, and I'm, I'm in phase three, my second time through. Cool. And you're, it says here you're, uh, 165 pounds. Yeah. About, I put on a, maybe a little bit more since then. I've been kind of slowly bulking since then. So like 170 ish, right around that. That's good weight. You're moving. Yeah. This yeah. is, so this is a tough question to answer because there's a lot of factors that play into, you know, mm -hmm. someone's strength, but I'll say generally, for uh, a man, you know, your age, consistent training, you've only been working out for a year, which means you still have a lot uh, that you can progress to, right? If you said this is 10 years, yeah. it'd be There's a lot still more difficult. potential there. You know, and if you do really good training, you know, good programming, good diet, um, most guys will be able to deadlift 
can get to about a two and a half time body weight deadlift. I would say most, I'd say it's pretty, it's, I would say a good 70%, 70 to 80% of men will be able to get that. Another 10% or so will be able to get to a three times body weight. You weigh 165, let's say you got up to 175, 400 pounds is, is within range for 12 months. You, you got to follow really good programming though. Yeah. To go from 315 to 400, it gets Put them on You got to be more specific. Maps powerless. Power yeah, 100%. Is, yeah, maps powerless is where get you there. Yeah. Yep. After you finish maps anabolic, you do maps power lift. I wouldn't be surprised if you got up to like 375 uh, awesome. at the end of it with it. Yeah. And that'll only yeah. leave you 25 pounds away from I mean, your, it's, it, there's a lot of potential here because yeah. it's, because yeah. there's technique in there too, that you can really master and improve, not just, you know, as we're progressively overloading, like you want to really be able to get uh, fluent with that. And so the more practice, the better. That's why power lift is going to be great. For I you. mean, when I was chasing you, Sal, I was, I started about 180, 185, 200 pounds is all I was deadlifting. So, I mean, and I just watched that yeah. Yeah. over, we, especially with a movement like a deadlift or a squat, because there's so much technique involved so not only is there a potential of building muscle and getting stronger but then also just the cns adaptation of your form and technique so there's there's lots of factors that could yeah and could you've only this. been deadlifting for so you've been working out for a year but you've only really been deadlifting for like four months yeah yeah about that oh yeah, yeah. and you're yeah. at 315 yeah you 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 you, sh you should be able to get to 400 i think you will yeah. so long as there's no big hurdles in the way or anything like that i think that's totally run mass power lift really yeah, yeah. follow mass power lift that'll do it for you yeah, I mean, overall, I'd love to see all of my lifts go up. So I've kind of set the goal 400 for my deadlift. I w I'd love to get over 300 pounds on my squat and get my bench to 225. And, and really my squat, I'm in phase three of anabolic right now. I'm, I'm actually doing 225 wow. for the for the, the endurance phase of it. So that's oh, been wow. yeah. getting better. So that's, uh, I think I'm, I'm think I'm there. I think I'm getting there, but really been focused on technique. Uh, uh, overall. If you're at 225 and for like 15, 20 reps, you're bro, probably you're, already, you're, already, you're, already, you're already there. And I bet you, if you were to do a, when was the last time you actually did a single or a double, try to do low rep, really low reps. Uh, not since, since, uh, the strength phase of oh, anabolic. Yeah. You're probably yeah. already there. Yeah. If your deadlift got up to, gets up to 400, it's definitely reasonable to have your squat be within a hundred pounds of that yeah. for sure. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So no, uh, good, good job. Is just normal. Just eat surplus protein. Yep. Yep. Uh, targets. It's all there. Yep. Okay. Get good right. sleep and you know, all that stuff. And, um, I, what I'd like to do, Nicholas is we're, we'll send you mass power lift. I would awesome. like for you to get back on uh, at the end of Powerlift to. Yeah, us, I would love. To I, I, I want to hear about what you what you noticed and what your see what, how, what your strength gains yeah, were going into. That Let's show. do that. Uh, I love that. I yeah. love that. Maybe the maybe the last like uh, three weeks like before it's over, email in so we can make sure we have time to get you in. It'd be nice to get you like right when you're timing the end of it. Yeah. Or maybe Doug, you can make a note for us to schedule them out that far. Okay. All right. Sounds good. That's awesome. Hey, well, thanks, guys. I, I really appreciate that. I appreciate the advice and. Really, like overall, like you've gotten uh, all of your contents fire, like all the guests you bring on, everything's just great. I've even had my wife running through uh, uh, Anabolic as well. She's loving it. She went from doing classes to now focusing solely on strength. Awesome. And, like we're, uh, awesome. we're loving everything you guys are producing. So thank Hell you. yeah. That's great. Hell thank yeah. you, Nick. Great news, Nick. Yep. Thanks, guys. All, all right, man. Take all it right. easy. Yeah, the whole strength. Uh, you know, standards uh, like a two, two time body weight deadlift is within the reach of most healthy men. Mm -hmm. Two and a half starts to get harder. Three time. Now you're getting to like, you know, more <laughs> elite, of an elite kind of level. Super strong squat. One and a half time body weight. Most men be able to get there. Two time body weight. Now you're getting really strong and then bench, you know, one and a half time body weight. Those are like the standards mm -hmm. um, that are good things to chase that if you're healthy, fit, you train a long time, consistently good technique. You'll get pretty close. Anything beyond that, now you're starting to get to like the, you know, you're getting that elite level. Yeah, the real strength. The real key for the listener to understand, because I think it would be very unrealistic for most people that have been lifting for, a, a, you know, five plus years. It's because he's only really been yeah. consistently lifting for the last year. We know there's a lot more. Yeah, there, yeah there's a lot of potential in him still gaining a, a Unless lot Unless he'd been lifting for five years terribly. Or yeah, like circuit training. Yeah, right, right. Like, or he never deadlifted, right? Yeah, let's say, yeah. and then now he's deadlifting or something like that. Then you can see those types of gains. Yeah. I mean, that's what happened to me. Like, I'd been lifting for 15 years at that point in my in my career, but I had never consistently deadlifted. Yeah, so there was just tons of yeah. There's tons of potential there. Our next caller is Rachel from Maryland. Hi, Rachel. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, 
I just, like everybody else, want to thank you for everything that you contribute, the pearls that you provide. I actually work in the healthcare industry, so it's definitely very uh, enlightening to hear the conversations that you guys bring up and the discussions that you challenge with things. So thank you for everything you do. Awesome. awesome. Thank, thank you. Great. Um, so I, my question is primarily surrounding having a busy lifestyle and if I, you know, I'm not getting enough movement in my day to day, is it appropriate to add a little bit of cardio, uh, to help counter that? Or is that going to, um, negate the, the work that I'm doing towards muscle building and muscle maintenance. So I uh, don't necessarily get an adequate number of steps in per day. I have a fairly sedentary job. I work as a nurse practitioner. So I'm in a clinic setting. I stand a lot, but I'm not really walking a whole lot between room to room. Um, I'm 30 years old, five foot eight, about 153 pounds. I don't track my body fat percent, but um, really just feeling a little bit troubled where at the end of the day, I only get about five to 6,000 steps. And I would really like to hit that 10 to 12,000 step goal to help lean out a little bit, but don't want to sacrifice my strength by overdoing cardio to fit in at the end of the day, just getting that extra movement, say to get a mile run in versus walking a mile just from time constraint standpoint. So I wanted to hear your advice and um, what you guys think. Do you track calories at all? A little bit. I had uh, done some calorie tracking probably four or five years ago. I don't pay too much attention to it now. I try to pay a little attention to how much protein I'm getting. If anything, I track that's kind of where I look at. And okay. I probably get about 120 to 130 grams per day. Oh, good. You're, you're not going to get leaner from uh, doing more cardio. Um, we now have lots of data to show that. But the, it's if But it's healthy. It would be healthy for you to get some more steps, but I wouldn't necessarily schedule cardio to do that unless that's the only way you could do it. So what I would do, and it's not as hard as you think, right? So you're getting 6,000 steps now just by doing mm -hmm. your job. Just after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, just try to walk for 15 minutes, you know, 10, mm -hmm. 15 minutes. That alone will probably get you close to 8,000 or 10,000 steps. Or go and for it's a really walk just, right before bed. Yeah. It's just for health. It really is be for health. Now, the fact that you're standing mm -hmm. is a lot better than sitting. The data on being sedentary, they really show the negative effects from come from sitting more than anything else. Like even if you're active, if you sit a lot all day, it's very detrimental. Yeah, believe it or not, six to seven thousand steps is above the average. Yeah, <laughs> but if you're lifting four days a week, you're strong. You put your yeah, you put your numbers up there. 235 squat, deadlift 245, bench 140. It's a big bench press. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, your your body weight and height is good. You look lean and healthy. Um, I would the only the only reason why I would add steps would be because you feel like you need to move more and it's just good for you. But don't do cardio for fat loss. It just doesn't it doesn't work for fat loss. For endurance, for stamina, it's great. Activity by itself is just healthy so long as it's appropriate. In your case, I would just say, just try to walk a little more uh, throughout the okay. day. And that alone would be perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, ideally, if I if I have a client that wants to lean out a little bit, I, what I'd want you to do for the week or two is just to give me a track so I have an idea where our calories are at. Because, right. or I mean, a generic thing, to, if, I, if I had an idea, I would say something like, oh, well, just cut that serving in half or skip this one meal and you're going to be, you're going to lean out just fine. But I don't want to say that not knowing where your calories are. Cause I wouldn't say that to somebody who let's say is at only eating 1500 calories a day. If you're only eating 1500 calories a day, I'd say, Oh, let's reverse diet. Let's get you up to a, a, a healthier, more thriving metabolism. And then I would cut you back down. But if you're in a good place, say you're eating 2,500 calories a day yeah. or more, yeah, I would just say, oh, let's just drop, you know, two, 300 calories yeah. off the diet and do what you're doing. And then occasionally add some walks in at the end of the day, if you had like a, what you would consider a, a really low or sedentary day and you're going to lean out nicely. Yep. But, uh, okay. but I'd want to know where your base is first. Cause I wouldn't want to advise you to cut calories if I thought you were already in a pretty low place. So if you're under 2000, I don't like the idea of cutting calories to lean out right now. I'd rather reverse diet you, keep building muscle, keep getting strong like you're doing, then cut back down after I've got you up to say 25, 2700 calories. But if you're above 23, 2400 calories already, you could easily just cut out 300 calories and or add a little bit of walking every single night so you're getting over 2000 steps and you'd see a nice nice lean out from that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um and then as far as I've done 
um, a couple of your guys' programs. I've done strong. I've done aesthetic maps hit. Um, and then I was looking at, uh, potentially doing something like symmetry, but, um, particularly when I did, uh, maps hit, like, is it, is that the program with the neat days on the weekends? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like, yeah. I, I like symmetry for you. I like it especially symmetry. because okay. it's especially, well, I don't know. Okay. So obviously nurse practitioner is a wide range of things that you might do, but if you're having to move, uh, patients, mm -hmm. uh, and support patients. Symmetry is really going to be good at preventing. I mean, the injury rate with nurses oh, yeah. is through the, the roof. The yeah. Back, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So I like symmetry, especially because you've already followed strong and I don't like hit for you. I mean, hits good okay. if you want like really build stamina in a short period of time. Uh, but for what you're doing, I think, um, I think strong was great. Anabolic would be mm -hmm. good. Symmetry is yeah. good though. I think would be perfect. Yeah. I like right. symmetry or performance. I think there's, I think there's going to be some benefit to e some mobility or multiplanar yeah. movements. I think that's the way to go from where you're at right now. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I liked hit just, uh, like I was saying, the neat days were a little bit harder for me to fit something in without feeling like I wanted to do a full workout. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, thankfully I'm not really moving patients or lifting any equipment. I'm in a outpatient clinic setting, okay. but, um, still there is like some of that, you know, depending on what we're doing, leaning over and, and some of the body mechanics can be a little bit hard, but, um, thank you. I appreciate that. You got it, Rachel. That's great. Yeah. We'll send you map symmetry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thanks. You got it. All right, Rachel. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great day. No right. problem. Well, it's this is it's good that the message is getting out because she's asking about cardio and talking about sacrificing muscle and strength. But I don't want people to be afraid of cardio. It's just don't yeah. do it for fat loss. Right. That's it. It's just not good for fat loss. But for stamina, use it for what it's best at. Yeah, for stamina and endurance, nothing's better than cardio. You want to build endurance, go do cardio. Um, if you want to improve your health and you're not active, moving is good for you. And that's most moving is cardio type uh, activity. If you're just trying to be active. But when it comes to fat loss, strength train, strength train, and, and then diet, of course. Yeah, uh, to actually me, diets first. I would say. Yeah, diets yeah, first, diet. and that's why to me the the real first thing here is to get an idea where we're at. Yeah. So long as she's in a in a, a good yeah, healthy. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, right? Because if she was already eating so low calorie. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. So I don't. I wouldn't want to take her from under two thousand calories and then cut her down to say fifteen hundred or yeah, something yeah. just to lean out a couple percent, even though that would potentially work. But now I've got her down she's to in a, a bad place. place then. Yeah, she's at a place where she can only eat fifteen hundred calories. Like that sucks because yeah. you can't go on vacation. You can't have a little. And bit you're of also getting only fifteen hundred calories with the nutrients. That's right. And, that's yeah. right. So if. But if she's in the mid 2000s already, oh, sure. We'll just cut three, 400 calories out of the diet every day and you're going to lean out nicely. So to me, that's the most important thing is to see where she's at calorie wise based off of her size, movement, all that stuff like that, and then decide whether we cut or we reverse diet. Our next caller is Bethany from Tennessee. Bethany, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, I'm so excited to be here. I can't believe I can see y'all. <laughs> um. So I have been listening um, since about April or May in, um, of last year, and I have just enjoyed all of the episodes I've listened to. I started at the very beginning and skipped around a little bit um, just to find different topics that I was wanting to listen to, but you guys are awesome in all the information that you're providing. Um, so I'll dive into my question for you guys um, for time's sake. <laughs> um, so my question Will implementing a new stimulus help with fat loss or to visually see the fat loss, um, you need to eat at a calorie deficit um, no matter what, like no matter the circumstance. A um, little bit of background. I have been lifting weights consistently since January um, 2022 and then started following MAPS Anabolic in August of 2022. Um, since following maps and listening to the podcast, I have eaten that maintenance or a slight surplus in order to gain strength and then to allow my metabolism to adapt towards um, muscle growth. Um, and then for over a year, I have maintained my weight uh, while increasing strength. So never a decrease in weight. Um, I've always wanted to be strong and I never found um, anything on how to eat or train until I found you guys. Um, I guess I wasn't looking in the proper places <laughs> over the years. Um, and I have heard you're stronger than you look so many times throughout the years. And I want to look as strong as I am and then continuously getting stronger. 
Um, I enjoy how much food I am currently eating along with the, um, the quality. And I, I say that I don't, I'm not tracking, but I had started after I submitted the question because I figured y'all would need the information. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think I can track at a calorie deficit without hitting mental blocks and then leading into inconsistencies and then down spiraling since I've, I've done that every, every time I, I track in a deficit um, throughout the years. Um, is it possible to introduce a new stimulus, say MAP Strong or MAP Anabolic, and remain at my current calorie intake, which is 2300 currently? Um, or do I really need to eat at like 18 to 1900 calories to further see the fat loss? Um, I want to experience the body composition that you guys talk about while lifting heavy and eating well. I'm a believer of lifting weights. I absolutely love it. Um, and then walking for cardio. So I'll do anything that you guys um, advise me to do. Um, I'm here for all of it. <laughs> so I am uh, five foot four, main, maintaining at 162 to 165. There's some fluctuations. Um, and my number one goal is strength and then to lean out enough to be able to see the muscle gains. Okay. I got good news for you. Doug, okay. can, you, can you scroll up for me, please, and sh uh, where she had her her, her strength gains? Uh, the strength gains that you had, I'm going to go over them here. So your squat okay. went from 20-pound dumbbells, uh, for stopping at 90-degree angle, to 105 pounds for four sets of four, and you went deeper. Wow. Your deadlift went from a 25-pound bar on a Smith machine to 125 pounds for four sets of four reps. Yeah. Over how long of a period of time did this happen? A year, right? Yes, a year. And then okay. actually Monday I hit 135 on my squat for two reps. Okay. So that was my that was my goal. <laughs> so I got, get two plates on there. Yeah, yeah. I got really good news <laughs> for you. Monday. I got really good news for you, Beth. Because you went the, like the strength gains and the fact that your body weight stayed the same. Or even went down eventually. Yeah, yeah. You, so she went you went down a little bit actually in body weight. You got leaner and built muscle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. what happened. Okay. Okay. So you're, you're really right on, you're right on track. You're a hundred percent on track. Um, now the cardio that you're doing, it's set up there. You're doing about 45 minutes, five days a week. Is that just walking? Yes. Strictly walking. Oh, you're, you're killing it. Yeah, yeah. you really are. Okay. You're, you're doing really good. I wouldn't go on a cut because you're still, you're getting leaner. You yeah. are right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, okay. to, to get okay. that, that much of a strength ain't gain, broke, don't fix it. that's a huge strength gain over the course of a year. For your body weight to to go down because you went one you went from one seventy down about on the scale about about eight to five to eight pounds on the scale. Give yeah, one seventy was the highest increase that I saw. Yeah, I would I would mm -hmm. uh, I would guess that you gained uh, five or more pounds of muscle and lost probably seven eight pounds of body fat. Yeah, and oh, so wow. on the scale it's going to show up like a few <laughs> pounds. <laughs> Uh, you know, do your clothes fit differently? Are, are people commenting that you look like you lost a bunch of weight? Cause sometimes that'll be, that'll happen. Someone will come to me like, you look like you lost a bunch of weight or you'll notice in your pants fi feeling a little different. Um, waist typically smaller, maybe tighter in the glutes. Are you noticing any of those things? Um, yes and no. Um, with the pants, I try to focus on like, if it's feeling tighter in glutes or even like your quads and hand strings. Um, but it's mostly, my like the core so back and then stomach where i see like i could like quote unquote trouble areas um if i didn't have that i probably wouldn't have any issues with how i look um because i can see some you know muscle definition in my legs and my arms um it's just not showing up i guess where i want it to be and we can't you know we can't spot <laughs> You just gotta reduce. You just gotta stay uh, on track. You just gotta keep going. Yeah, just keep going. You're yeah. moving in the right direction, Bethany. Yeah, yeah you really are. You, we could. Okay, so I mean, you could do a cut. Yeah, I, this is how I would do you, your cut right here. Is I wouldn't do much of a cut actually. In fact, I would be kind of hanging around the the calories where you're at. Where you're, I think you're around a maintenance to a slight surplus because we're gaining muscle three weeks out of the month. Then one week I would put you in a deficit. So one week we would cut calories, say four or five hundred calories, or just you know a meal get a meal out of there and that's it. And then go right back to the, the calorie surplus slash maintenance and just keep rotating through that. 
because I think you're already doing a pretty good job of of yeah. leaning out. You just don't realize it because the scale is hovering around. The, you're in what we call the Goldilocks zone. It's actually like the sweetest spot to be at where you're just, you're getting a little stronger. You're building muscle. Yeah. You're also losing body fat. And it's just a process. It just yeah. takes, it's a, it's, it takes a long time to build a pound or two of muscle. It takes a while to burn a pound or two of, of body fat. And you've got a nice even exchange happening right now. And so you're not seeing big swings on the scale. But all the all the indicators are are all positive for us. If I'm seeing, and yeah. you just said you hit another PR on the squat, just like yesterday. I mean, that's great. Yeah. So it's like it, and if that, so that would be another thing too. Like, let's say we 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 talk in a month or two, and your your progress is stalling. You haven't got any stronger. This and the scales. I mean, then maybe we decide to reverse diet, or maybe we decide to cut because you're not continuing to see performance gains and getting stronger. Uh, and you're also not feeling like you're leaning out. Then I mean, maybe you just we hit another PR. Like, but yeah, you just hit. Another, I mean, you're getting stronger. So I mean, we're we're building okay. muscle. You're doing yeah. you're doing how, good. How tall are you? <laughs> how, how tall? Yeah, are you I try to tell myself just to trust this process. But when you're in it and you're not seeing what you think you should see, it's very difficult. Totally. So that's a good Listen, reminder. That's that's the biggest challenge for everybody. Okay, yeah. it's like I'm not yeah. seeing what I think I should. That's always a question. How what's, how tall are you, Beth? I'm five four. Five. Listen, I, I one of the most fit, lean female trainers I ever had was about 157 pounds at your height, almost your oh. body weight, but she was shredded. So there's so much right. potential for muscle. Um, that and in fact, body weight, I wouldn't even weigh. I mean, you can weigh yourself, but I don't think you should. I think you should just stay on track. Maybe throw a, cut, a little cut here and there, like Adam said. But you're 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 already moving in the right direction, is, is what I'm saying. I, Beth, I see that you have a, quite a few of our programs already. Let's put you in the forum. Are you on Facebook? Can I get you in there? Yeah, I'm um, I'm on Facebook, and I don't have the forum yet, so that would be fantastic. Yeah, I would yeah, love cool. to put you in the forum, and then just keep us updated. Just you know, check okay. in with us at least yeah. once or twice every other month or whatever, and just keep us posted on on your numbers and how things are going and then we could give you little adjustments along i really think and then just the encouragement of stay the course because i think That's you're it. doing great yeah. and i think you'll hear you're that from, killing it and you just need to hear that yeah, yeah there's quite a few people in the community that are in a very similar place so i think it's a great place to kind of hang out and totally. you know spitball ideas or things that you want to do like you're gonna you're gonna get great feedback there awesome and then so with the three weeks of maintaining should i ever um try to slowly increase my calories or just hold off on doing that um, until I see a plateau. Well, right now you're. I think the. I think wait till you plateau. But what's happening okay. now is where your calories are at now is uh, you're in an interesting space because you're leaning out while building. So I don't okay. even think you're in that big of a surplus. Uh, I think you're in maybe a tiny surplus. So you could bump your calories. You might slow the fat loss down, but you'll speed up the muscle gain. So that's up to okay. you. But but if you do want to see yourself get a little lean a little faster, then I think the three weeks on one week, you know, cut is a is a good is a good way to start. Really what it looks like when somebody is is doing what's happening with you where you're kind of hovering around these calories and we, what we can't see into because we can't we're not peering into minute by minute, day by day is some days you're actually in a little bit of a surplus, say 100, 200. Other days you're in a deficit to two or 300. And it's like, it's just, which is a beautiful place. It's like okay. you're feeding the body the way you should feed That's it. body composition change. Yeah. Exactly. And, and it's, and it's changing and it's doing it naturally without you having to have like, you know, scheduled three, you know, so many days in a, in a deficit so many days of surplus you're hovering right around where your body needs it naturally has higher calorie burn days and lower calorie burn days and so you're leaning out on those lower ones and you're building a little bit of muscle on those higher ones and so you, that's a that's a beautiful place to be, be and i wouldn't mess with too much of that right now at least not until i start to see progress being stalled and so okay get in the community get in the forum Keep keep us posted on how you're going, and if if you start to get discouraged or you hit a plateau, then we'll start to manipulate and some change some things. Okay, sounds good. Thank right. you guys so All right. much. All right, Beth. This has been awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. All right. What a good place to be in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, today I feel like we 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 got a lot oh, of people all that, the champions <laughs> uh, that are doing. Which is, I mean, that's. I mean, if you're if look, here's the deal for people watching. If you see big strength gains and your body weight is staying the same. That's a huge, you, huge you, That's win. a very, very clear sign that you're very likely, okay, very likely to be building muscle and losing body fat. You mm. don't go from a 20-pound deadlift to a 135-pound or whatever she went up to without gaining some muscle. And if her body weight is even lower than it was when she started or the same, yeah. well, well, okay, well, why didn't her weight go up? Well, it's because she lost body fat. You know, this is also why I, I do like to, you know, 
I, for me, not for the client, but for me to have like photos of when we started this process. And then like, you know, also, yeah. like, that way I could show, I'd put them side by side and like, look at this. Yeah. I know you feel yeah, you weigh the same. But yeah. I know you feel like you haven't seen a lot of change, but yeah. look at, and then I can, and I can literally point out like, yeah, look like at, look at context. Your, yeah. Look at your waist here. Look at the muscle definition that's coming out yeah. here. And like, yeah. you're changing your body and trust me, it just, because you see yourself every day and it's incremental and it's a very slow process and the scale's not swinging like crazy. If you get numbers like this, where you're, you're increasing your strength this much consistently and scales kind of hover around you get you're in the Goldilocks zone totally. you're in a sweet spot our next caller is john from canada john what's up man how can we help you hey guys how's it going good, good. what's up man man i'm really excited to be on your guys' show this is crazy I've been listening to you guys for like over two years and i swear every episode i'm just learning something new whether it be through life um fatherhood or just fitness and health obviously so awesome. thank you. Thanks, man. Great. What you got for us, John? All right. So my question comes in two parts. So one relating to fitness and one relating to nutrition. So first thing, uh, how can I progressively overload or track improvements on fitness metrics other than the weight on the bar? So I know putting weight on the bar, it's uh, to me, it's objective, whereas other metrics like tracking your mobility or balance, to me, it seems a little bit subjective. And number two, I've never really tracked my macros consistently. And I kind of just eyeball what I eat, making sure I have a balance of protein, carbs, fruits, veggies, and all that. However, I feel pretty good. So is this a case where if it ain't don't, sorry, if it, is this a case where if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Or is there value in me tracking calories or macros? Um, sorry, just a background. I'm 24 years old, been working out for, uh, over six years, but it's only been the past two years where I've been dialed in and consistent. For the first part about progressively overloading, um, well, there's a lot of different ways to do this. You, you mentioned a few in your question, balance, stamina, mobility, control, tempo. And then one that's objective and easy is, is total volume, which is uh, weight times reps times sets. And that's your total volume. And you can slowly over time increase your total volume of, of your workouts. At some point, though, you can't progressively overload, right? If you've been doing this for 10 years, like a, there's only so much volume that you can go up. There's only so much weight you can add to the bar. And yet you can still make improvements. And one of the best ways to do that is to introduce exercises that you're not good at, to learn new movements, challenge mo you know stability, or just challenge different athletic pursuits that you haven't trained before. But those are the best ones, right? I like I like range of motion and control and stability, and I like total volume a lot. Weight on the bar is great. Total volume though tells you a lot more because, you know, you could do a high rep uh, exercise with less weight and actually do more volume. Oftentimes you do do more volume than if you were doing high, heavy weight with low reps. And total volume speaks more to recovery and adaptation than just total weight. As far as macros is concerned. There's a ton of value in tracking your macros, really just learning what you're doing and where you're at. And then if you want to progress in any direction, you'll have an idea of what levers to pull. So that's the value. I think most people would, would gain a lot of value from tracking, at least for a certain period of time, just to, just to kind of learn and bring clarity to what they're doing. I mean, eyeballing is always off. Now that doesn't mean, it means you're still paying attention, you're aware, so you're better, a lot better off than the average person. But nobody is nobody guesses right. I, I don't guess right. Adam doesn't guess right, you know, and, and Adam tracked for years. So tracking is illuminating oftentimes. You'll look at me like, wow, I thought I was eating more protein than that. Or wow, that's how many calories I'm eating. I thought it was over here. And then you have a better idea. And then if you ever want to like pull a lever, you know where to go. John, what what Ooh. programs of ours have you ran? So I recently ran anabolic um two months ago, and now I'm on symmetry phase two. Okay. Yeah, good. So uh, like a, a great way to, you know, overload and, and pay attention to fitness metrics is to run through like a series of, of our programs that are, are very unique. Like, so anabolic, symmetry, performance, aesthetic, like that's a good, like it's a good mix up right there. And that really covers a lot of your basis as far yeah. as like overall fitness. And as you come back around through those, 
you know, you're looking at improvement. You're look, When you're in anabolic, you're looking at improvement on your squat and deadlift and how much stronger you got. When you get through performance, you're paying attention to how good you can do some of those challenging exercises that are unique, the mobility, the depth of your squat. Like, can you perform the lunge matrix really well? Like, you're looking mm-hmm. at stuff like that. When you get to aesthetic, you're focusing on shaping and sculpting the physique. Do you, do, did you gain an inch on your biceps? Does your shoulders look better than they did the last time around? So those are like really basic, easy metrics too, to just to pay attention and to watch as you go through the program and the program's laid out for you. So you don't have to like overthink this process. You just go through it. You you stay on top of your sleep and diet and nutrition and, and you try to improve every time you go through the programming. As far as the nutrition goes, I'm, I'm with Sal, like I, it, if you're somebody who's doing well. And like you said, if it, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Well, yeah, you don't necessarily need to change a bunch, but I would every once in a while, and I still do this, where I'm like, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna track this week and just see what I'm doing. And every time I do that, I recognize a few things. Oh, wow, I didn't realize I, I wasn't getting that much fiber. I need to, and then the next, and then I can not track, but then I'll just make sure I add foods that are high in fiber because I tend to miss that. Or, oh, wow, I thought I was getting more protein than I was. I was, I was actually uh, under eating protein. I'm going to bump or add a protein shake in there every day. So I think checking in, every once in a while uh, to see what you're currently doing and and pay attention to some of your habits that you may be doing that may be like miss you may be missing the mark on a couple things and then you go back and you just start to add the add those things in the diet and then you don't have to track don't pay attention for a while and then recheck back in and see if yeah. every time you check back in you're you're doing a better job of really uh you know without tracking being able to target the things that you, your body needs yeah, I'm a big proponent for reassessing. So not just um, in the beginning, we we kind of point people towards our our maps prime uh, prime compass tests, uh, just to see kind of where we're at in terms of our range of motion, our stability, our joint function. Um, and so to to be able to come back like two three months and like kind of periodically uh, throughout the year. Uh, to kind of see where you're at in terms of the changes, or uh, even if you've been lifting heavy and getting stronger, um, how is that affecting your mobility and your overall functionality with that? So that's one to always kind of throw in there to reassess and look at. I think that the Turkish get up is a very valuable exercise for assessing a lot of what a lot of people uh, don't realize uh, in, in terms of control and in terms of strength and um, being able to uh, move in a very detailed way and to be able to to, to do that like um, while holding weight and while anti-rotational uh, components there that you're, you're trying to control your body at a pretty high level. So I, I would use that one as another measure uh, for being able to see your progression uh, just with your overall body's performance. I think that's a good one to kind of look into as well. Yeah, it's definitely an exercise I've never done before. So it'd be really cool to incorporate that for sure. Yeah, yeah good deal. So, so, but I like the program you're following now. Yeah. I think symmetry is great. Yeah, you're on the right track. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving it so far. It's completely novel to me. And the fact that there's isometrics and um, unilateral stuff in there, it's it's been really helpful. It'll be interesting to see at the end when you get to get to, when you do the bilateral stuff, just what kind of strength gains you got. And especially for your age, you know, the questions you're asking and for your age, and you've only been really doing this consistently for two years. You have a lot, you have mm-hmm. a lot of progress there's, ahead of you for maturity sure. maturity there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you, your, your peak is going to be in terms of strength and performance. You got like another 10 years. You're doing good, man. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate that. <laughs> you got it, man. Keep it up, John. Thanks yeah, for calling yeah. in. Thank you. Have a good day. You guys. You, you too, too, brother. brother. Just a bunch of good news questions today. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know? Jerry made sure of that. I yeah, guess. The, the whole progressive overload. I love that message. It's true, but then it can get a little sketchy because yeah. like, it's not you, linear. You just keep progressing. You I just keep only, adding things. I only really cared about this when I got into competitive mode. Yeah. The yeah. rest of my lifting career, I just <laughs> and, you know, and teach there. I know there's somebody out there. That it was also was, incremental, Adam. I mean, yeah. you got to explain that. Like you, you got to a pro level, but it wasn't like you looked at your your volume. You're like, oh, cool. I'm going to go up 30%. Right. It was very incremental. Well, you know what I saw the <laughs> most value? And if you've listened for a long time, you might've heard me say this. It's been a long time since I've mentioned this. The most of value that I had in tracking volume was actually not the 
oh, every week I'm going to increase more volume, more volume, was actually just to not go backwards. Yes. So because what I, what I learned over tracking that diligently for that long of a period of time was we have these natural peaks and valleys. Oh, you have a good week of rest and you did all the, yeah. the right things and you just feel good. And so you, you push that extra set or that extra weight. And then the next week, not so good. And then you would go. And so well, we, without tracking. Yeah. You went with that. And with, so I, what I noticed is like, man, when I looked at the, the over, over a month or two months of tracking, I actually wasn't really progressively overloading at all. I, I had these peaks and valleys. And so, and in my head, I'm remembering, oh, the, but yeah, but I was lifting more weight that day and I did more reps this day. But then I also had the week where I went the other direction. And so when I, when I was competing, my real goal wasn't like to always just keep adding more volume. It was just like, just like this week, even if I had like a rough week, I'm like, just make sure I get to at least that volume. And then when I have a good week, I'm going to make sure I push the volume up yeah. a little bit. And so it was really, really small amount, but it was really to help me from not letting those weeks where I go backwards. And again, that is, was only important because I needed every time I got on stage to show I need to show that I've improved my physique. And so there I'm like on a timeline. If it was just real life, like I deal with now, just listen to your body. Yeah. I just listen to my body and I'm going to have times when I'm, I'm progressing well. And other times when I'm regressing a little bit and other times where I'm just kind of maintaining and, you know, and, and I'm always trying to, to adjust things in the, in the day to make better sleep and better this and better that. But I, I'm not a fan of really getting hung up on a lot of these metrics, unless you are in some sort of a competition where we we've got to be yeah, done. But and even then, like if you, if you looked at it over the course of a year, it's incremental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not these massive jumps in progression. Yeah. You know, look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. Also come find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano and Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam.